Welcome to the 2023 NFL Playoffs Wild Card Round Sports Betting Picks video here at FTN Bets, where we're going to look through the opening lines from DraftKings and FanDuel and see if we can find some value. So the first game this weekend is going to be Saturday at 4.30 between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. Seattle finished the year 9-8, and eight, grabbing that uh, wild card spot. San Francisco finished up 13-4 and four NFC West champions. These two teams are in the same division and played twice during the year. So in week two, San Francisco won that game 27 to seven. Uh, I know it feels like forever ago, but that was the game that Trey Lance got hurt. Uh, Seattle, 14 rushes for 36 yards is all they could muster up in that game. And that's going to be a theme that we'll talk about here again in a second. The second time these two teams met was a couple weeks ago in week 15, 21, 13, San Francisco won that game. Um, Brock Purdy, 217 yards, two touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey, 26 carries for a buck eight and a touchdown. Six catches for 30 yards to go along with that. And Kittle had four catches for 93 yards and two touchdowns in that game. Uh, Gino actually played pretty well, 31 for 44, 238 and a touchdown for him. Uh, Kenneth Walker struggled in that game, 12 carries for only 47 yards. Lockett and, Met and Metcalf both had seven catches there. So when I break this game down on a neutral field, I get San Francisco is about eight points better than Seattle. Factor in the home field advantage. I get San Francisco should be favored by about 10 in this game. DraftKings and FanDuel both agree. They both have this game exactly at 10 as well. So not really any value there to bet on the, you know, on the side. Again, the totals in this game are pretty low, 27-7. So that's 34 points, 21 to 13, also 34 points. So the under does have a little bit of juice here. And I'd also be looking at the under for Kenneth Walker rushing yards since Seattle struggled in both of those games. The next game up is going to be the 8 o'clock game on Saturday night, and that's going to be the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Los Angeles finished the year 10-7, and seven, grabbing that wild card. Jacksonville, the worst of the uh, AFC uh, division winners at 9-8. and eight. They beat the Tennessee Titans to win that division in Week 18, and they're going to be representing the AFC South. They do get a home game here. They are the one home team, I think. Oh, no, sorry. There are two home teams that are underdogs here. They're one of two home teams that are underdogs, both of the ones with the worst records on either side of the bracket. So let's see here. Um, Jacksonville, I actually get on a neutral field, the Chargers should be favored by about a point. So these two teams are kind of even. The Chargers slightly better on a neutral field. It's not a neutral field, though. It is going to be in Jacksonville. So I think Jacksonville should be the team that's actually slightly favored here. Now, again, not favored by a lot. I don't even think my numbers come out to being a full point. So I get about Jacksonville minus one is probably the number there. Um, on DraftKings, they have the Chargers should be favored by one. On FanDuel, they have the Chargers should be favored by one and a half. So I do think there's a little bit of value here. I think the wrong team is favored in this game. Now, again, when we're talking about numbers down here, they're slow, you know, minus one to one team versus minus one to the other team. It basically means that this game is about as close as it can be to a coin flip here. And like I said, I actually favor Jacksonville a little bit with them being the home team. So I'm looking at the money line here. FanDuel, you can get this money line at plus 102. DraftKings has the money line at even money plus 100. FanDuel is the place that I would like to play this. I like Jacksonville plus 102 over on FanDuel. The other thing, too, if you're looking to play a teaser, if you can find this at one and a half like it is on FanDuel, that's where you want to tease this because you can tease them up with six points up to seven and a half. You get through that three, you get through that seven, you get a home team plus seven and a half in this situation. So I like that a lot with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Again, I play them straight up on the money line. I think they're the team that should be favored. I think there's a little bit of value there. So let's move on to Sunday. Talk about the 1 o'clock game on Sunday. That's going to be the Miami Dolphins against the Buffalo Bills. Miami, 9-8 and eight on the year. They ended up uh, with the wild card after Buffalo knocked off New England for them in uh, Week 18. Buffalo finished up 13-3 uh, and three on the year. They didn't play that other game, obviously. So they are the AFC uh, East champs. They finished up with the number two overall seed. So these two teams are in the same uh, division. They played twice this year as well. Miami won that first game 21-19. Buffalo won the game in week 15, 32 to 29. Uh, Jalen Waddle played well in both of those games, had some splash plays in both. Four catches for 102 yards the first matchup, three catches for 114 yards and a touchdown in the second matchup there. Led Miami receivers both times they met with uh, Buffalo in the past. Josh Allen also played well in both of those games. Threw for 300 yards in one game, threw for 400 yards in the other game. 700 yards, six total touchdowns in the two games that he played against the Miami Dolphins defense this week. So you kind of know how Buffalo is going to attack them here. 
the big news that we have to talk about here is we have a little bit of an issue with the Miami quarterback. Is it going to be, you know, Tua? Is it going to be Teddy B? Is it going to be Skyler who played, uh, Skyler Thompson who played last week for them? If Skyler Thompson remains the quarterback of this team, I think this is, this should be like a 11 and a half point spread. If it's going to be Teddy B, it should probably be somewhere close to that, maybe like 10 and a half points. And then if Tua was going to play, I'd say it still should be somewhere around five or six. Now, Looking at this number, it doesn't look like Tua is going to play. If Tua did wind up playing, then maybe there would be a little bit of value on this game. But if it's going to be Teddy Bridgewater or Skylar Thompson as their starting quarterback, it should be double digits right here. And that's basically what we're seeing. DraftKings has it at minus 11. FanDuel has it at minus 10 and a half here. And I would kind of agree. Like I said, my number is 11 and a half here, and that's assuming Skylar Thompson's the quarterback. If it's Teddy Bridgewater, it'd probably be 10 and a half, which would put me right in line with uh, FanDuel and right in between you know, my Skyler number and my Teddy B number over on DraftKings. So I don't really think there's a lot of value here. I do think Buffalo is very likely to win this game and move on, you know, 10, 11 points. though. that's a lot of points to ask in this game. And we still have to see what's going to happen with the quarterback. Next game up is the 430 game on Sunday. That's going to be the New York Giants against the Minnesota Vikings. These two teams just played a couple weeks ago in week 16. Minnesota winning that game 27 to 24. Uh, Giants came back, tied it up. Minnesota had a field goal at the end. I think that was Christmas Eve, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of remember watching that one in the house with my family, who's all Giants fans, with the exception of me. Uh, let's see. Cousins threw for 299 in that game with three touchdowns. Uh, Jefferson, 12, 133 in a touchdown. TJ Hawkinson, 13, 103 and two touchdowns. So the Giants got absolutely torched through the air in that game when they played. When I break this down on a neutral field, I get Minnesota is more than a field goal better than the Giants. I think three and a half points is what I get here. Uh, Minnesota, the NFC North champ, 13 and four on the year. You know, a lot of people say they're a fraudulent 13 and four, but you know, 13 and four is 13 and four. They may not be a 13 and four team, but they're not a fraudulent team here. The Giants, 9-7-1, and one, pretty much out overperformed what they did all season long there. They got the wild card to get into this game. When I break everything down, three and a half points is what I get on a neutral field with home field advantage. I get Minnesota should be favored by about five, five and a half. The number on DraftKings and FanDuel is Minnesota minus three. DraftKings has it at standard minus 110 juice. FanDuel even has that juiced up a little bit at minus 114, meaning FanDuel is more likely to move to a Minnesota minus three and a half at some point throughout the week here, which is what I do think is going to happen. So if you guys want to bet Minnesota where I think the value is now, go over to DraftKings, take it at that minus 110 number. That's the way that I would play this. I think we got at least two, maybe even two and a half points of value on this one. I like Minnesota and I would lay the three points with them. Next game up, the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Baltimore, 10-7 and 7 on the year. Cincinnati, 12-4 and 4 on the year. These two teams just played, so this is a rematch of last week. They just played to decide who was going to win the AFC North. Cincinnati won that game. Uh, what was the final score of that game? 27-16. Couple interesting things though. There was no Lamar Jackson in that game. There was no uh his backup Huntley was out in that game. Mark Andrews sat that game out, and J.K. Dobbins sat that game out as well. So there were a lot of guys on the Ravens side that weren't playing in that game. Baltimore did beat Cincinnati in week five, the first time they played when a lot of those guys were healthy. I don't think Dobbins was in that game, but you know, a lot of the other guys that we mentioned were. It was 1917 in that game in week five when these two teams played. We still don't know who's going to be the quarterback for Baltimore, whether it's going to be Lamar, whether it's going to be Huntley, whether it's going to be Anthony Brown again. You know, Anthony Brown did not look good in that game last week. Completed, I think, just 19 of the 44 passes he threw. Surprisingly, though, he did throw for like 280-something yards in that game, despite only completing 19 of the 44 passes. But, you know, I would think that that would give a big bump to Cincinnati if he's not in. And looking at the number right here, too, I think that that's kind of the way that the books are looking at it as well. I have Cincinnati is about seven and a half points better. Uh, five and a half points on a neutral field, seven and a half when you factor in home field advantage. DraftKings and FanDuel have this at six and a half, right? So I do think there is a little bit of value laying minus six and a half with Cincinnati. Like I said, my number is seven and a half. My number's on the other side of the seven. We're getting it at six and a half below there where, you know, Cincy winning by a touchdown would give us a win. I think there's a little bit of value on the Cincinnati side. I have no problem laying six and a half points with Cincinnati. I think that's the way to go. And we do have a Monday night football game here for the wild card as well. And that Monday night football game is going to be between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dallas, the number five seed overall for the, um, you know, the best wild card team, basically after the four division winners, 
Tampa Bay, the worst of the division winners, eight and nine record NFC South, but they were the NFC South champions here. These teams did play once this year. They played in week one. Tampa Bay actually beat them 19 to three in that game. I think that was a game that got knocked out, right? Because I think Cooper Rush played a little bit in that game. Um, Leonard Fournette had 127 yards rushing in that game. That was the big reason Tampa Bay was able to win. Uh, on the other side, there wasn't really a lot. I mean, you got like 40 or 50 yards rushing out of Zeke in that game. None of the wide receivers were all that great. I think Noah Brown led them in receiving that game. C.D. Lamb did play, but, you know, Brown was the guy that led them in receiving, just to give you an idea here. Now, do I think that matters this week? I think it matters a little bit, right? Like, you know, some people would look at this and say, oh, Tampa wasn't good this year. Dallas was pretty good. You know, Dallas should be a big favorite in this game. Dallas is slightly favored in this game on the road. They're the other road team that's favored, but they're only favored by a field goal. And I don't think it's crazy on a neutral field. I think Dallas is about five points better. So factoring in home field advantage, that would get it down to minus three, which is what they have here. So I think that number is exactly where it should be for this game right here. Um, DraftKings has it at plus 100. I think it's playable. Dallas minus three at plus 100, I think is playable. If you didn't want to go there, I would basically just pick Tampa Bay money line and go that route if you think Tampa Bay is going to win. I don't have a bet on this game because I could see it going either way. I think Dallas looked really bad last week against Washington. And I think Tampa Bay, I mean, listen, you can never really bet against Tom Brady, right? Like that's, you know, they, they, they didn't really care about the regular season. They did the regular season just to get to where they are now, to have a chance in the playoffs, to make a deep run, to go to the Super Bowl. And they're right where they need to be. They got Mike Evans playing pretty well finally. You know, Godwin's had a really good season all year long. Um, you know, the rookie running back White looks pretty good out there as well. So I'm avoiding this game altogether. But I do think there's a little bit of value on Dallas minus three on DraftKings at plus 100. I would not chase this any further and I would not lay any juice with it. But on DraftKings at even money, the Dallas minus three is worth a bet. So there you go. That's going to wrap it up for our first look at Wild Card Weekend and the opening lines here at FTN Bets. Remember, you can get over to FTN Bets, FTN Daily, or FTN Fantasy right now. Use promo code Benny, B-E-N-N-Y. Sign up for a new account. You'll get 20% off with that promo code. Get you in there just in time for the NBA season, which is in full tilt, NHL, college basketball, and everything else that's coming up. So for my producer, Quan, this is Benny Ricciardi signing off for another episode of Betting with Benny. Good luck, everybody.